Hello, here's the video on trig form of complex numbers part two. Uh, for this lesson, you are multiplying and dividing complex numbers using trig form. So the theorem on products and quotients of complex numbers states that if trigonometric forms for two complex numbers z1 and z2 are z1 equals r1 cosine i sine of theta1 and z2 equals r2 cosine i sine of theta2, then I can find the product and the quotient of these two complex numbers by following this. Now, before I start talking about the formulas, one thing that I want to remind you of is I am writing these in the short form with the CIS. Just don't forget that CIS of theta is the same thing as cosine of theta plus I sine of theta. Sometimes I just don't want to rewrite the entire expression, so that's why you see the CIS. Okay, so going to the formulas, if I want to multiply two complex numbers, I'm going to start by multiplying their R's together and I am going to add the angles together. And then I'm going to go through the process of evaluating that cosine plus I sine. If I am trying to find the quotient, I'm going to divide my R's and I'm going to subtract my angles. And again, I'm going to evaluate this piece of cosine theta plus I sine of theta. So let's go ahead and do an example. So use trig forms to find the product and the quotient. So part A is the product, part B is the quotient. Now in order to do that, you need to know two things for each of the complex numbers. You need to know R and theta. So let's go ahead and start by finding R and call this R1. R1 is the same thing as finding the magnitude of a vector. So I have my real part, so two root three squared. Uh, plus my imaginary part, which is just that negative 2 squared. Simplify that, that gives me the square root of 16, which is 4. So R1 is 4. And I go ahead and do the same thing with my other complex number, so R2, square root, negative 1 squared, plus square root of 3 squared. That gives me the square root of 4, which is 2. So right now I have my R's for both of my complex numbers, now I need to find theta. Now in order to find theta, you should graph your complex number. So when you're graphing a complex number, this right here is the real part, and your Y is the imaginary part. So my real part is positive 2 root 3, imaginary part is negative 2, so I have a positive real part with a negative imaginary part that puts me in this fourth quadrant where this side is 2 root 3 and this side is negative 2. Now the angle that I am trying to find right now is this inside my right triangle because this forms to create a right triangle and if I go back in my brain and think about Sokotoa, I have my opposite and my adjacent. So in order to solve for that angle, I am going to use the inverse tangent of negative 2 over 2 root 3. Now when I plug that into my calculator, let's see what that is. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, which I just fixed on mine. So inverse tangent of negative 2 divided by 2 root 3 gives you negative 30 degrees. Now we don't actually care about the fact that that angle is negative because we always want the angle from standard position. So standard position means I'm starting at my positive x-axis all the way around. So if that theta is negative 30 degrees, that means the actual angle in standard position is 330 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing with my second complex number. Sketch it out. So my real part is negative, imaginary part is positive. That puts me over here in the second quadrant, where this piece is negative 1, this piece is root 3. And again, we have a right triangle. And I'm going to use inverse tangent to find that angle. So inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. So root 3 over negative 1. Inverse tangent. Negative 
negative root 3 gives me negative 60 degrees. And again, we always want our angle in standard position. So positive x-axis until you hit your complex number. So that is going to be 120 degrees. Okay, so now we have all the pieces to be able to find the quotient or the product because we have R1, R2, theta1, and theta2. So now at this point, I'm just going to follow the formulas that I had over here. So for my product, I'm doing Z1 times Z2, that is going to equal R1 times R2, so 4 times 2, cosine I sine of theta1 plus theta2, so 330 plus 120, That gives me 8 cosine I sine of 450 degrees. Now from here, we need to actually simplify this expression. So don't forget that um, cosine I sine is the same thing as cosine of theta plus I sine of theta. I'm going to distribute my 8. So I have 8 cosine of 450 plus 8i sine of 450. And now I'm going to evaluate those trig pieces in my calculator. So I'm doing this, just cosine of 450 and sine of 450 in my calculator. Cosine of 450 is 0 or sine of 450 is 1. So my final answer for the product is just going to be 8i. Now let's do the quotient. So for the quotient, z1 divided by z2, I'm going to take r1 divided by r2, cosine i sine of theta 1 minus theta 2. That gives me 2 cosine I sine of 210 degrees. Um, from here, I'm going to expand it out. So that is the same thing as 2 times cosine of 210 plus I sine of 210. And then from here, distribute the 2. Just like I distributed the 8 over here. Uh, that gives me 2 cosine of 210 plus 2I sine of 210. Now again, doing this in pieces. So I'm just doing the trig parts not putting everything in my calculator at once. So I'm going to have 2 times whatever that is plus 2i times whatever that is that I get from the calculator. So I'm going to type in cosine of 210. That is negative 0.866. Now I do not ever want the decimal. You should recognize 0.866 as one of your radicals around the unit circle. And that radical is root 3 over 2. And then I'm going to do sine of 210, gives me negative 1 half. And then I'm going to simplify this expression. So my 2's are going to cancel, so I have negative square root of 3 minus, because of this negative, and again your 2's are going to cancel, so 2i times 1 half is just i. And that is your complex number of the quotient. All right, so that is everything for trig form of complex numbers, day two.